I'd like to introduce Tom Donnelly, who's the president of Valley Crest Landscape Development. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you, Karen. Uh, congratulations to W. Neal and the city of Santa Monica. One thing that's interesting about design building is it's not commonly delivered construction system. Normally, you see these kinds of projects in a bid build environment where the landscape architect or the architect who gets a set of plans to be prepared for the client, and we as contractors prepare our bids. This was a very integrated process. It was very collaborative. And I don't think there were many change orders at the end of the day, and which is good for the city of Santa Monica in terms of value, right? And when you walk the park, what I'm amazed by is the level of detail that's here. And, you know, knowing this is only one for two days, and you look at it for yourself, this must have been a very, 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 very mature park. Uh, before I get to introduce our keynote, I want to make sure that uh, I congratulate also Pancow for the project that's going on next door. It's another very, very complicated project. I think you'll come to understand that more when you do your hard hat tour. So congratulations to them for that project. Uh, our keynote speaker tonight is the president of related companies in Southern California, California, excuse me, Bill. And uh, what I'm most impressed about with related is the kind of projects that they tackle in the areas that they choose to tackle. These are not easy cities to build in, They're not easy cities to get your permits and get your entitlements. But related gets, makes a commitment and commits to some amazing projects. We know what's happening in downtown Los Angeles, the Grand Avenue project next door to the Grand Avenue Park, which is going to be another amazing public space for those of us that live in Southern California. And, uh, and to talk about Bill for a few minutes, if you Google Bill, what you'll find out about Bill Quiddy on the, the internet is his engaging way about this guy. There's an article in there about a speech he gave at the University of Pennsylvania School that Bill graduated from. Earlier it was more interesting, sure but I didn't turn it off. A long time ago, and that, I think that may be the words you use with those kids when you're giving a lecture. But what Bill was encouraging all the graduates was to be very collaborative and to be very much a volunteer. And that's what you is all about too, right? We're all out here, we're trying to learn, we're, we're thinking about things that are happening other people are doing, we're learning from one another. And I think it's a really great way to, it's what Bill Whitty is all about. Bill today, uh, as I mentioned, is the president of uh, Related to California. Some of his history, he was a deputy mayor of housing and neighborhoods, an acting director of housing authority for the city of San Francisco. He spent some time in Washington, D.C. on public policy. Uh, he has worked in, uh, related, I'm not certain, a number of years, but I know it's been a while. Graduated from the University of Pennsylvania with a Bachelor of Arts degree and a Master's in City Planning. And Bill Whitty is our speaker tonight. I'm very uh, pleased to introduce you to Bill. Bill. I was listening to a keynote, and I'm not sure I'm bringing the sort of gravitas and formality to, to that title. Um, I'm going to try to keep this more informal, because I think that's the best way to talk about these things. The first thing I have to say, this is my, I've watched Tom the Park as it was being built. This is my first time seeing it finished. I mean, you know, we're kind of jaded, but this is unbelievable. You know, we finished Grand Park downtown last year, and we're very pleased, maybe even pleasantly surprised how that's turned out. Not just specifically, but in terms of the usage, it's really getting used and programmed. But this is the most impressive public space I can recall seeing. And we're happy to bask in its glow, even though we had absolutely nothing to do with it. Um, but the city has needs to be congratulated because it's an amazing resource. And you see, yeah, it's almost like out yeah, of a textbook. Yeah. All people I'm really happy with that. I'm really happy. Here, yeah. here, and yeah. um, I mean, this is really going to be an amazing thing. So, congratulations to the city for doing it. And we thank them. It's going to help us a lot. Um, I think it's also a, a good segue into talking about uh, our bill um, because it's kind of the ultimate public-private partnership. Um, just picking up on, on the history, the city did a, for qualifications and then proposals, what, you know, 2006 maybe, 2005, not far back, 
Um, and consistent with the plan that they had pursued in having bought all of this land from Rand Corporation, and they used redevelopment funds to do it, at least 25% of any housing built had to be affordable. The city insisted on 50%. The city also, at the time, had a specific plan for the Civic Center area. They wanted 325 housing units, of which at least half had to be affordable. Uh, there weren't there were general design guidelines. Uh, there was a 56-foot height at the time in the Civic Center area. And the land was to be leased. They insisted that the land had to be leased. Um, we entered the competition with our design team, still with us today. Well, I'll talk about it in, in, in a few minutes. Um, and I think what made it, our, us a little bit unique is that there are developers that build luxury housing and there are developers that build low-income housing. They're usually not the same developer. We have kind of a hybrid business model where we do both. And I think we have a pretty good understanding of both. We also do a lot of mixed income housing, our three apartment projects in downtown LA are all 20% affordable. And that pr has proven to be very important in planning, designing, and financing this project. Um, and the city was a hugely active partner in this. They're very firm, right on up to the city council, about what the public benefits need to be. They're willing to work with you to help you get them, but they're insistent, as they should be, uh, on those being delivered. In any event, we embark on a four to five year process of planning, design, and approvals, and like everything in Santa Monica, it's a very active community. So every every step of the way, um, every concept is vetted by the community, a planning commission, a design review board, and ultimately the city council. And one of the things that was very helpful to us is that the city council had a number of members, two of whom unfortunately have, have passed away, uh, Herb Katz and Ken Genser, who Herb's an archi practicing architect, and Ken should have been, even though he was technically just a planner. And also a lawyer. were very engaged and very helpful to us in navigating this process, and as I'll describe in a minute, dealing with some of the challenges that we had to overcome to, to arrive at a, at a full project. So let's, I want to first talk about some of the planning and design challenges and then the financing and then how it all kind of came together. From a planning design point of view, we started out in our proposal, we proposed 65 foot buildings. Why 65 feet? Because that is the limit for type three wood frame construction. We assumed that that would be the more economical way to try to achieve the desired result. And there were always going to be, there were always effectively three types. It's not really one project, it's really three projects, as you'll see in the tours. Two condominium sites uh, with an affordable housing site in the middle, and all of that's flanking a uh, office building owned by Rob McGuire. Um, the other thing was that Ocean Book was a complete dead space, as was alluded to earlier from Santa Monica Place down to the Viceroy Hotel is kind of a blank slate, and it felt empty. You had that one office building, but it didn't really activate the street at any way. So that was another issue. It was not just the mix of incomes, how you plan that, the different markets, but also how to activate the street. Um, as we got into it, um, we concluded that from both an urban design and a financial feasibility point of view, the site would benefit from more stepping up of height if the city would agree to it. Not on every site. The first two sites here, which you'll see, 658 condominiums and 160 affordable units. That's right, 160 affordable units sharing a podium with 58 condominiums. Um, uh, have stayed at the 65-foot height of it. On the other side of the office building, uh, the 93-unit condominium building steps up 
to, I think, 105 feet at its highest level, right opposite the Viceroy. But we were able to make a case to the city that provided these are stepped back, that when you're a pedestrian, you're looking at these sites, they don't feel like 105 feet. It's not 105 feet at the street line. It's 105 feet back in the rear of the site. It also created some design uh, interest. Uh, a number of the council members remarked to us, it's so funny because Playa Vista has become so successful, they said, we don't want this to look like Playa Vista, meaning that it's all at the same height. We wanted a little more interest. Um, and so we were able to, to, to get that. Second thing was these two sites here, um, the first condominium site and the affordable site, are separated by what we call private street. It's privately owned, but open to the public. And this is something that emerged from our community meetings, where the public wanted, they didn't want a traditional suburban uh, wrap type product. They wanted something that was more urban that engaged the public, knowing that the park was coming. So there's a couple of gestures in that direction. The first is, as you'll see, in the middle of this um, the condominium building, there is an archway opening. So right in the middle of the block, instead of the unbroken string of units, you have a public entry into the private street, right in the middle of the block. And, you know, we had to just visualize it at the time, but now it's right opposite the park. It's a very powerful, I think, public statement. Um, second thing is, lining that private street um, on both the, afford on the affordable side, are, I think it's 10 live work units. So you have live work units on a private street in the entry to the site. We are responsible, not the city, it's privately owned, and we will control it, but it's publicly accessible. There will also be retail space, almost 10,000 square feet, um, wrapping around uh, really the entire project. There's another 10,000 feet on the other kind of for a total of 20,000 square feet of retail. A crucially important issue that's not only amenity for our residents, but also for activating the streets and the whole civic center area. I used to ask the city folks, where do you go to lunch? Kind of greeted with an indifferent shrug. I mean, there's not a lot of opportunities here. So um, incorporating all of this into a financeable, feasible scheme had its challenges. First off, it's a lease, and we're proposing condominiums. Now, most of you are thinking, we just don't do that. That just isn't done. Well, we've done it before, but there were a couple of conditions. Number one, it had to be 99 years. And that was later amended, as I'll describe in a minute. It's got to be that long. Second, it had to be prepaid. There could be no ongoing economic event. Uh, so homeowners associations are done with the economics. No lease payments, no fees. So it was financially, the way we sell it, it's like a fee in sheep's clothing. But when we finally got down to the, the, the brass tacks, trying to finance this in 2011, remember, 2011 is not 2013, and it's a condominium, and it's on leased land. A lot of lenders wouldn't, they love the numbers, they love the market, they wouldn't talk to us because it was a condominium. We went back to the council, and the council agreed to a provision psychologically helped us and kind of pushed us over the edge, which was at the end of the 99-year lease, there was a provision in which a fair market value for the lease, for a lease extension would be established by appraisals, and it could extend for another 50 years. And you think, we should worry about that. Well, people think about those things. They can point you to the Irvine Company land in Newport Beach where leases are actually coming up, expiring. So that was a very important thing. The city was very cooperative, was very involved every step of the way. How did, how did we get it to this? Um, here, I think, our ability to sell not only the city, the location, the obvious attributes, but our experience in mixed income housing, uh, the way the deal was put together with the city, um, the, the strength of the market, I think, you know, prove critical our relationship with financial players. Um, we were able to, uh, and, and the, probably the most 
complicated issue is getting someone to make a construction loan in reasonable terms. Remember, 99-year lease, you're sharing a podium with 160 low-income family units, not senior units. Um, you know, it had its issues. Ultimately, we were able to get a construction loan from Wells Fargo Bank, who also made the loan to the affordable housing. You're sharing a podium. You can't have two different construction lenders. They got significant Community Reinvestment Act credit for that, but still, you know, not everybody was willing to do this. They ended up participating out some of the loan to HSBC, both lenders that we have established relationships with, and related had to guarantee repayment, not just completion of the project, but 25% of the loan, something that we had not done before. Then it's used to providing corporate guarantees of completion, of completion, but not for repayment. So we felt strongly enough about the market that we were willing and certainly able to do that. Um, we have a very strong equity partner, a Resmark company, uh, a local firm that manages CalPERS and CalSTRS money. And to date, has mostly done deals with smaller home builders. They're really focused on the home building business. But they understood the strength of this market. They viewed our city, our high-rise condominium project in Century City, they kind of believed in us for $57 million uh, in equity to make the condominium financing work. The affordable project, 160 units, was financed with tax-exempt bonds and so-called 4% low-income housing tax credits. But for those of you even vaguely familiar with housing, you know that in the coastal areas, that's not nearly enough money. That gets you maybe 60, 70 percent of the way there. So the city did a very creative thing. I don't know who's here from the city, but did a very creative thing. They took the money, the $23 million that we paid them for the, fee, the leasehold interest in the two condominium sites and lent that back into the affordable project. So even before there was a sense that maybe redevelopment was coming to an end, there were no direct redevelopment dollars in this project. Rather, they leveraged money from the for sale component or the market rate component to help pay for the affordable component, which is, I think, an interesting model in this post-redevelopment era for the type of things that might be done, if not quite at this scale. Um, we had to do a lot of planning uh, to for the different markets. These are two and three bedroom family units in those 160 units. So you're probably talking about you know, 500 kids are going to live in that building. Behind the building, you may get to see, there is a not extensive, but a carefully plotted um, open space area uh, for children to play. There's indoor and outdoor, outdoor common space. We partnered with Community Corp of Santa Monica, a very established, experienced, uh, and capable local nonprofit who's built most of the affordable housing. Santa Monica, uh, you know, who will be the managing general partner of our partnership that owns that. So that's another story we tell the lenders, is that not only are we experienced and have a good partner in the affordable housing, we're staying on in the ownership. We're part of the ownership. We're not going away. We're a long-term player here. So that gives you kind of a sense. I'm, I'm really, you know, compressing a lot of issues period of time, some of the challenges that, that came up and how we addressed them. I want to say a word about our design team. Um, we had two architects, uh, Koenig Eisenberg, who ultimately worked on the master planning and design. I say the affordable housing. I defy anybody to look at this finished product ultimately and say, well, that's market rate, that's affordable, that's... It's all market rate quality. Just some of it is more affordable. And more Rubel Udell, who designed the condominium buildings, um, and Neil Aaron Associates, who's a landscape architect. Um, I think this project is already beginning to justifiably win awards, and I think it will then win many others after completion. They really did an incredible job. I mean, it's not easy. Not only the collaboration, going through this process, 
earlier about the park, integrating the public comments into uh, ultimate design, dealing with, you know, it's a, it's a, it is, it's a challenging entitlement climate here. Uh, people didn't have the park to see. Council members were quick, quick to point out for those who said it's too dense, it's too high, it's too this, well, there's going to be a park. But no one had that to look at at the time. Now, of course, I think people will be justifiably very happy. Um, but they deserve a huge amount of credit because it's a unique product, it's unusual, it's different, but it works. It works from an operating point of view, it's efficient, and it shows that you can get really outstanding design to something that works in the marketplace. So I'd like every, actually everybody to give them a round of applause. Panko Builders is our general contractor. They're also building our high-rise apartment building next to the Broad Museum downtown now. Uh, and again, it's three projects. No, it's projects. It's three separate projects that has its own challenges. Um, at this point, as we, I think, get ready for the tours before I turn it back to Gail, I want to introduce our project team. Gino Canori, who runs our multifamily development. Stephen O, our project manager. They're doing all the work. I'm the guy giving the quote keynote speech. They're doing all the work. And they will take you on the tour. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Feel free to become interested in buying one of the units. I have to tell you, you know, it, condos are all about timing, and the timing does appear to be very good. Uh, one, one other thing I, I should tell you about the public-private aspect of this, there is also a profit-sharing feature we really hit the ball out of the park on the condominiums, the city shares in the upside. So uh, I think every, you know, the, it's good to be growing in the same direction. Everybody, everybody benefits too well. There's also a host of sustainable features. This is probably one of the most sustainable conscious cities that we've worked with in California. A lot of those things, Gino and Steven will talk to you about those as you go on the tour. I'm not going to get into the individual design as much. Thank you all for coming out. Enjoy the park. Congratulations again to the city. It's really spectacular. Thank you. Join me in thanking Bill and all of the speakers.